What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Coach Black, your internet, relationship, and breakup coach. Today's topic, is no contact ever just a bad idea? Is your case different? Now, as you may notice, the scenery is a little different. The sun is kind of out today and it's just shining really horribly in the place I usually record. So bear with me, you know, maybe we'll start to use this scenery more frequently. Let me know in the comment section if you like this better. Also, I got all red on today. I don't know, I just got this jacket and I had a red hat, so there you go. So that's what we got going on today. Anyway, so is your case different? So I wanted to make this video to give you a complete framework around you know the type of things that your ex says to you around the breakup and what does it mean like how can we assess does no contact apply here because in some situations very few okay very few no contact is a bad idea and you should not be implementing it so i want to talk about that in this video so pay attention and hopefully this helps you out to answer the questions that you're dealing with currently now let me say this every individual break breakup is slightly different okay uh, we're all human and, and obviously we want similar things we want you know health wealth success happiness we want to be happy with the people that we choose to be with so we, we in the big picture have similar goals but when you get into individual situations breakups different things happen okay so this is just a rough guide a rough framework that hopefully gives you the clarity that you're looking for now let's just jump right into the framework now the first type of breakup that you should be assessing is the positive slash neutral breakup and what i'm talking about specifically is if your ex told you things like it's not you it's me or they tell you things like, I love you so much, you're such an amazing partner, and I'm just not good enough for you. They say, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. You see, the tone of those things is, is generally positive or it's neutral, meaning they deflect the blame about the breakup away from you. Right? They put it on something else. Life is crazy. Work is busy. My family does not like us. Okay, so it's never specifically you as a person. Anytime you see language like this, and, and I would say this is probably going to be the most common scenario that you see. It, it comes due to the fact that, you know, human beings have a natural tendency, okay, to, to deflect power to weaker people. Meaning, when someone is high on the totem pole, if I'm better than you, it's not classy to rub that into your face. Right? This is why people say you don't punch down, right? You punch up. People, it, it's never perceived well to hit or, you know, bully someone while they're down. Now, some people do it, okay? But generally speaking, and if your partner is a normal, healthy person, on average, all right, if they feel a value difference, if they think that the grass is greener, they can do better elsewhere. Subconsciously, they see themselves here and they believe that this breakup is going to devastate you. And so they use this type of language to just kind of numb the pain, to soften the impact of this terrible blow that you're about to endure. So whenever you see things like this, okay, no contact, absolutely applies you should go into no contact as quickly as possible because okay this person thinks that they're better so you have to raise your value in their eye they have to see a different side of you they have to see that you are willing to walk away from those that walk away from you you're willing to sacrifice this relationship and this connection if this person is willing to walk away so easily so pay attention go back to the types of things your ex was texting you during the breakup especially when this whole thing first started and look at it is it generally positive okay if it's not one of the, the examples i said is it generally positive or neutral are they blaming you or are they blaming everything else that has nothing to do 
with you. This is a good sign of a value difference where your ex believes that they are better. Okay, and this is likely going to be the most common. Be honest with yourself. And this only applies to break up conversation. Now, if you've implemented no contact, things will change and your ex's tone and language and the things they say will change and this even causes further confusion. But we'll talk about that in another video. Now, the number two uh, of these types of breakup or the number two example is what I would call the more negative, okay? Your ex is negative about you. Now, let me say, this tends to happen, all right? If your ex's initial response is negative, you know, you're a bad person, you're terrible, you did, you know, it's negative about you, generally speaking, okay? This is this could be someone with a personality disorder, okay? So if it's a narcissist, for example, it can never be them, it has to be you, okay? Or this also happens, for example, let's say you catch your ex doing something that broke your trust, broke your heart, and you are, you know, questioning them about it. And instantly, instead of trying to understand where you're coming from, they flip the blame on you. These are more, like I said, more personality type of issues. Okay, so pay attention. Is this a reaction to you catching them doing something negative? Maybe they were cheating, they were lying, and instantly they flip it on you and they break up with you instantly in reaction to that fight that you caught them doing something negative. Those two cases, definitely you should still be in no contact, okay? Because they're punishing you for you know trying to deal with the issues of the relationship All right these are personality issues that you cannot fix okay and again generally speaking it's not natural to start a breakup from a negative conversation type of a place even though it's a negative situation a lot of times you'll see that it's neutral or positive like i gave an example number one now the only exception of where no contact or the main exception where no contact does not apply is if you can honestly look and assess and you can say that I was the toxic one in the relationship I lied I cheated you know I caught I got caught doing certain things that hurts the relationship and this will likely not be vague things it's usually specific like it's a specific issue that maybe your your partner has addressed in the past Okay, it's something that if you share with your friend, oh, I did this to my partner, you'll have a general consensus of people agreeing with you like, yes, that is bad. Because sometimes during a breakup, you tend to internalize. You blame yourself for everything. I'm a bad, bad partner. But sometimes that's just your mind trying to understand where the dumper is coming from, where your ex is coming from. And so you blame yourself for everything because you want to carry that cross and you want to fix the situation, okay? So you feel like, okay, if I confess to all my wrongdoings, my partner will take me back. That's not what I'm talking about. Specific things that most people in consensus would agree, this is a specific negative issue that you should not have done, okay? And this is the only exception where your ex goes into negative. It's because they are hurt. They caught you cheating on them. Like, how could you do this? You broke my trust. You know, I don't trust you anymore. Or you talk to them in a very disrespectful, demeaning manner and they have a reaction. Maybe they've told you about it in the past and you continue to diminish them and disrespect them with your words and maybe with your actions. And they finally have enough. All right, and so they start from that negative place because they're hurt and broken. This is the one, one exception for the most part where you need to take ownership. You don't just say, okay, they broke up with me, I'm going no contact. Well, you cheated on them. It's, it makes sense that they broke up with you, okay? And this is just an example to help you diagnose because I get so many comments is my situation different or you know I think my case is different so just be honest and assess where do I fall into okay so if you were caught doing something like that you take ownership you apologize all right and that you say I'm going to make a change you make a plan into the future these are the steps I'm going to do to get better now, sometimes they will not accept they'll say you know I can't trust you I have to move on at that point, you accept 
their words and you leave them alone. A lot of times you need to put some space and distance between you and this bad behavior, okay? And it actually allows your ex to believe that you can change when there's time. Because your ex knows if they've been telling you about cheating for six years, you get caught, they break up with you, and then you come back two days later and say, I've changed. They just, they just won't believe you. So you should take ownership. You should apologize. You shouldn't go into no contact immediately. All right. And then if they still push you away, then you go no contact. That's the important distinction. OK. Now, I want to point out another case where your ex might become negative. OK. If you see like generally maybe your ex was neutral about the breakup or positive. It's not you. It's me. Sometimes when you don't accept the breakup. When you keep trying to communicate, you keep trying to talk, you keep trying to give examples and how we can work on this. Sometimes your ex will naturally get into defense mode. It's almost like when you uh, corner an animal. OK, even if the animal is peaceful, if it feels threatened, it's going to react. It's that fight or flight. And if you're not allowing your ex their freedom, because I say this a lot, love is freedom. If you're not allowing them their freedom and they feel like you're trying to force them to do something that they don't want to do, now you may notice their tone changes. It's more negative about you or more negative about the relationship. We can never make it work. We will never get back together. We are not good together. This is, again, usually a reflex because you're not allowing them the time or space. So be honest with yourself. If you're hearing things like that, you likely have not implemented no contact. You're not accepting the breakup and this is causing your ex to resist. Now they have to fight you. And when you know this, you know, when you're going into a fight, people are going to be as aggressive and as negative as possible so that you get the hint and you leave them alone. Okay. That's scenario number two. And the last one would not be as common as one or two is what I would call neutral or, or cordial indifference. This is when, you know, your ex is already almost totally emotionally checked out of the relationship. So they have no genuine emotion towards you one way or the other. Most people leave relationships before it even gets to this point. Okay. Now, unless there was something that was keeping them there, maybe, you know, financial benefits and, and things like that. So until they found some replacement for that benefit you were offering them, they stayed even though they were emotionally checked out. And so when breakups like this happen, you'll notice that the language is it's not positive or negative. It's very matter of fact. I'm not talking about a calmness because sometimes your ex can be calm, but they're still not blaming you. That's going to be the most common. Like, you know, it's not you, it's me and things like that. But when they're neutral, just extremely matter of fact, they're just like, you know, it is what it is. I wish you well. All right. Uh, that's a good sign. Like you don't have their emotional center and those kind of breakups are a lot more difficult. OK, the solution is still no contact. All right. Because appealing to them and trying to force them is not going to do anything to help your case. So very important that you see and assess this is specifically around when the breakup happened, not months after, because things change. You know, you might have gone into no contact and now your ex is reacting. And sometimes they react in a negative way. That's different. I want you to take your mind back to when this first happened and just honestly assess, maybe go into your text messages. What was the type of language? What were the things that they were saying? And you'll likely fall into one of these categories. Now, like I said, this is just a rough diagnostic tool because I get this question so often and I wanted to give you something, okay, that you can use to just assess for yourself. But again, it's not the same as, you know, having a call and discussing the specifics because like I said, every situation is different. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor and like it share it. It truly means a lot. It costs you nothing, but it means the world to me. I appreciate you for doing so. If you want to talk to me one-on-one -on -one about your situation, click the first link in the description and we can talk about it. And I'll be able to help you to not only diagnose, but talk about, okay, where do we go from here? Sometimes there's 
actions that you should be taking sometimes there's not you, you maintain no contact but if you want to talk about it click the first link in description and we can chat i appreciate you so much for watching for your support if you have any thoughts questions drop them down in the comment section below i reply to as many as i can not all of them but i will reply to some of them especially if you comment early thanks again for watching peace